What were we calling this? Ready Player Two? The worst book ever written? A review by two idiots? Maybe it's instead of reading it, just listen to us rip it to shreds for 30 minutes or whatever. And, uh, and right. Then you don't have to. We'll spare you. <laughs> you should not read this book. It's terrible. Okay, now spoilers. Who are we to say? We read it. <laughs> right. No, you shouldn't. We did. We did. <laughs> right. Spoiler warning right now, like, well, nothing really happens. There's nothing to spoil. That's the thing about this book. It's why it's so terrible. Is like, what are you spoiling? Nothing. Ha- what are you talking about? Nothing happens. Everything happens. <laughs> and, and nothing happens. <laughs> you know, they're on these quests and everything. And, and he's trying to make there be stakes, real stakes in this book. He's trying very hard to make you care about what's happening. But it just never really gets anywhere. You don't you don't believe that the, the worst is actually gonna happen. None of this matter. Like oh, I'm fighting a big boss at the end of this quest. Oh yeah, and if you die, you wake up again and nothing happened. Like it, you know, nothing matters. And that's where I, I don't remember the first book super well because it was in the past. <laughs> the past meaning doesn't but uh, I, I feel like in that one, there was enough happening in the real world too. Like, he, you know, he lived in the stacks and those got blown up and people died like for real, not just their avatar died inside this virtual reality, but stuff happening that, that you actually gave a crap about. And in this one that never really, he never successfully made me think anything truly bad was gonna happen though. And, and like you had said, when we were reading it, the first, third of the book it's like he's actively trying to make you hate the main character from the last book he's an asshole right why do you hate the he's the main (sighs) why is this great hero of our last book such now you're telling us he's this horrible person he's a complete idiot in the beginning of the book screwed up screwed up the love of his life uh spent money on dumb crap tricking out his mansion he, he he's like killing everybody like their avatars yeah. if they yeah. talk crap Hunting down people him. that are trash talking him it's like uh, like it's just, like uh just, it's like yeah. I, I i'm given the keys to twitter i'm 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 bestowed twitter an all-powerful twitter and i can just go in there and delete everybody right and left that says anything bad about me and it's like well, that's just being a jerk like what Right, but also he's not even really delete. All he's doing is killing them. They, they just lose yeah. all their stuff. They just wake up yeah. and then all their stuff is gone. It's just a, right. it's just like a jerk yeah. move. It doesn't even do anything. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's like you know, yeah, I deleted your Twitter account. Oh well, I'll go make another one. But what are you doing? Like, <laughs> Parzival is a jerk now and horrible, and you hate him. And uh, guess what? The all masterful, super smart. Uh, what's his name? Halliday or whatever. He's got an invention hidden in the basement that no one knows about. He created the ONI headset. And I'm going to say ONI headset 800,000 more times throughout this book <laughs> until you want to dab your eyes out. And even when they like introduces the, the, the headset, you know, so they're like, oh, here you go. I wasn't sure if the world was ready for this technology, so I hid it away for you to decide, yep. like, is the world ready right. for this important? And he's like, right. what the hell? Ooh. Why wouldn't you have done this? Like, like there was no <laughs> thought or discussion. He tries about it for whether- 10 minutes. <laughs> he tries it out for 10 minutes, like, this is awesome. Release, release, release. Yeah, there was like no thought, like, Wait, you just, in one moment, you're saying Halliday is your idol. And he's saying, this is an important decision. And the next moment you're like, well, you're an idiot. This should be released immediately. How could you have not released this? Like with just no thought. And then to give even so little thought to it that he loses, like he tells his girlfriend to go to hell because she disagrees with him. And like she leaves him over it. Just because, like, because you won't yeah. even accept the thought that maybe there might be something with this like, thing that might can be Can we off. take a week? Think <laughs> about it. 
talk it over, make a little pros and cons chart, maybe. <laughs> nah. By the way, because we need stakes, luckily this headset, if you keep it on for 12 hours, you're dead. That seems like a bit of a design flaw that you might <laughs> want to think about before you release it. But without that design flaw, the whole plot can't really string together. There's nothing that Anorak can hold over their heads. So, you know, he locks right, them right. And then 500 billion people will die or 500 million. I don't know. A lot of people will die, including you and your friends, Parzival. And then it's mm -hmm. like, oh, have some fun with these quests. And it's yeah. like, it's too late. I already hate you. And I hate this book. The worst part is how horrible these quests are. They're bashing yeah. you over the head with this nostalgia crap. The way he was inserting it into everything was like already bothering me. There was a part <laughs> at the beginning where he goes, he, he's in therapy because he's a jerk face. His virtual therapist is... Robin Williams from Goodwill Hunting, and they sit on the park bench where him and Matt Damon sit on the park bench. I'm like, what? <laughs> like this kid, this is in 2046, and he has a therapist from a movie from <laughs> 70 years before? Really? <laughs> like, I, you know, again, I, I, I get it. He's, he, he, he's Mr trivia of all things at this time period or whatever, but it was just like every possible instance where he could jam something in there from the 80s or whatever, he did. Oh, he didn't <laughs> let one go by. No, no. I mean, it, to be it, fair against us, that is his shtick. Yes. Yeah. And, I, you know, if, if I went back and reread Ready Player One, would it great on me now like it's just been too much and the first time through it was new and so it was like oh he's talking about back to the future and these movies from right you know back when i was a youngin and oh man that was great i don't know I, this one it felt like they're just thrown in there willy-nilly because people like it i guess in the first one it still felt all like plausible let me ask you this what would you say, is there anything redeeming about the book at all? Yeah, if, if I could pluck out just the AI portion of the plot, the way the headset could map you and, and would like resurrect you in a virtual environment, whatever, that's not exactly a new idea. People are talking about it all over the place. Elon Musk right. is literally right. trying to do it right now. <laughs> um, like there's a, the germ of something that could be good there. It's in this particular version, it just falls flat for me. Right. Okay. So we had this idea of have like maybe the, our um, like worst quotes. There's no shortage. Yeah. 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 So, you know, spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your quest, asshole. <laughs> Seek the seven shards of the siren's soul on the seven worlds where the siren once played a role. For each fragment, my heir must pay a toll to once again make the siren whole. So, got to find those seven shards. DS, not T. It's not you're finding. I'm looking for shards. I'm looking for shards. <laughs> right. And they're lady shards. Does it and, say they're lady shards? Well, they figure out it's for a lady. It's okay. a, a siren, I think, is usually a lady. Siren, so. siren, true. The siren is siren a, shards. Siren but shards. Um, so for the first one, he pays the uh, the low five a billion dollars for the shard, right? And uh, right. he's thinking, oh, well, see, I I had to pay a a toll for that because I had to pay. A billion dollars. Like, yeah, well, you know, that's not what I was thinking when it said the air must pay a toll, but it is. I mean, it's literally a toll is money. So, you know, okay. Sure. But then, like all the rest of them, it's just these flashbacks to Kira. Kira is the lady shard. How is that a toll? These aren't even bad 
memories, really. Like, was right. they're falling in love with Og. And so, okay, so you're misleading us with your stupid riddle to make it seem ominous, like something bad's going to happen, make me want to keep reading this piece of crap book. When actually, there's there's no toll. That's just wow. another minor grievance I had. There were two worlds that I found the most horrible. One was the what's his name's movie world. Oh yeah, the John Hughes movie. John Hughes, planet. John Hughes yeah. planet. Yeah. Um, didn't really enjoy that one at all. And I'm fine with John Hughes movies for the most part. I love John Hughes movies. Yeah, they're, That's they're great. Brilliance. Yeah. I, I didn't think you could write a chapter. Well, it was more than one chapter. I didn't think you could write about John Hughes movies, a planet dedicated to him, and make me hate John Hughes movies. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you right. did it. You did it. <laughs> right. So then that was that one was pretty bad. Ferris Bueller just walked by. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's that makes me so excited. I figured that would spice up the uh, little video cast. <laughs> right. So then, the, then I think the worst again, spoilers was the Prince World. The Prince World <laughs> was so bad, and I can I, I don't I I I don't have anything against Prince. I'm not a huge Prince fan, but I I li I've listened to Prince. I, I like Prince, of right? Um, I've, of course. I've had, uh, enjoyed quite a few of his songs, you know. But again, I'm not like a Prince nut. Like I don't, but you know, cool. He's cool. He's fine. Um, I'm not one of Prince's nuts, but I enjoy <laughs> them just fine. Okay, I think I think that's where we both stand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So wait, I'm not, am I? <laughs> I guess I can't a hundred percent definitively say that, but I really don't think I am. <laughs> yeah, I, who's to say really? Um, <laughs> so then, anyway, the the quote is very simple. It's from the Prince World, and it will um, <laughs> they will funk you up badly, my friend. They and will. The, the whole thing with them, like, and, and like you're gonna have a funk fight with like funky beats and it was just like oh my god uh yeah well you know and then, you got... and then again it just ends really stupidly where it's like yeah. you know you you're fighting all these different princes and they're like pissed at you and they're like giving you angry riffs i don't know <laughs> and like those and are some it, of the angriest riffs i've ever seen what did, did was that the one where she just sings in the end and they're like oh no yay. no no that's a different one <laughs> but it's the one i he had the the white guitar or something and i i don't know man he strummed a bright lick and funked him out i, I know really all of a sudden they were all like friends. they were all the princes were like yeah you guys are great and then like the prince came know. together and turned I... into a shard uh <laughs> And, you know, I was just like, what is this? Seven what? princes joined <laughs> into a sweet purple lady shard. And off we go to the next planet. And I, um, I, okay, so before, I have a quote from the Prince Planet too, because it was, we could just read the chapter. <laughs> and, but like, uh, one big bad quote. <laughs> here's what I jotted down. This is from chapter 23. Prince world, they're at mid, mid battle here. The whole battle was just, hmm. <laughs> but uh, I, I had to write this down. Okay. <laughs> Two doves rose up from behind him and hovered above his head. They both opened their beaks and fired shriek attacks down on us. <laughs> oh my God. Shriek attacks from doves. The dove shriek attacks because are bad. Prince, you know, the, the doves cry, huh? You do you get maybe if we got the references more, it would be more enjoyable. But uh, you know, those shriek attacks, you gotta look out for those. Oh. oh you've got a prince world with these seven undefeatable princes, right? And we're Funkin' battling with them. Right. And the doves raise up and fire shriek attacks down on us. 
none of the uh, attacks that he talks about or anything, not, not, they don't do anything. And he says, they fired shriek attacks and then we fired this and then they fired that and then we fired this and then we won and it was over. Like there's, there's no, what did the shriek attack do to you? Did it kill one of the people? Like, like what? Oh, it's just on. like glossed over and you go on to the next funk. I mean, it's pretty obvious you lose hit points. You know, <laughs> right. The game. Right. He does mention it. This is in a later battle because they're like, you know, I was one point or hit point or heart or whatever it is away from, from dying, yeah. right? They had knocked his health down to like right. one. Anyway, I just, that, that, that chapter, I mean, it was just so. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your rant just triggered a needle drop. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry to break it to you. <laughs> oh. That's right, the needle drops. During the, during the John Hughes chapters, if somebody triggered another needle drop, I, I might not have finished the book. <laughs> I, it, he failed to make me actually care about anything that was happening. And that's the whole job of an author, I feel like. Like you were talking about like, okay, so we're supposed to be concerned that uh, half a billion people, I think was actually the number, um, were at risk of dying. Parzival knows that he's got this group that was really helpful. He paid them a billion dollars in order to find the first shard. But he's like, oh, I don't want to call them right away. And it's like, wait a second, you have know. 12? He didn't want his friends to know that he paid for the first shard. Right. Like, you have 12 hours to finish this thing. You have 12 hours. All of these people die. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 500 million people online, death, 12 hours. It's basically like an impossible task. Like when it's laid out, you're like, well, that's not possible. I'm not going to yeah, enlist anybody. And again, any it's help. telegraphed. You know he's going to need them again. And then he does. And even that sort of tacked on, like they have to find, are they the ones that found the, the door if, slayer? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, it wasn't one worst quote, but okay, I, I want to do one more, one more quote that was toward. We're rocking like docking now. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was one of hey. You, I had to, I had to get that. Yeah, yeah. So this was from the last quest, but I thought it kind of summed up in the way of this quest thing being so meaningless, and how there was always like this solution that was just like, okay, so here it is. Luckily. I know a shortcut that leads directly down to the nethermost hall, which is where Morgoth's throne is located. You know, so they have this huge quest, you know, they gotta go, this, this undefeatable like monster has a crown, they need to get crap out of his crown. Right. But no um, one's ever defeated it. It's basically unkillable. This is when like, what's her name comes back and is like helping him. I know a shortcut, we'll just go straight to his throne. Um, we don't have to do any of this hard stuff. Yeah. And I sing the sleepy, sleepy spell song. The, is it the Sleepy Kitty song? We don't know what the song was, I guess. <laughs> okay, so I wrote down something from that. Uh, I don't know what the world was called. It's where it's where all the teaching happened and they, they weren't there for very long, thankfully. Mm -hmm. uh, they did see Rain Man. And so then they knew that Og was leaving them clues about where he was because a Rain Man is a movie from the 80s <laughs> that Tom yeah. Cruise was in and Dustin Hoff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're trying okay. to make you're so, like let's make sure this video is as bad as the book like <laughs> <laughs> if you couldn't make it through this video then you definitely should read the book um okay here's a quote from that world so he was talking to the the queen of the world or whatever that i, I think he got the shard right on doesn't matter <laughs> it says her husband the clueless king it's a lot who was always being taken prisoner by the evil wizard Multiplicator, who tossed him into the long division dungeons beneath Protractor Peak, located high in the more stuff mountains. And it goes on. I just, my notes say, what? <laughs> that had nothing to do with anything. It was just a description of her husband for some reason that wasn't there. What, what, are, what are we doing? <laughs> Could this just be a short story about some quick little lady shard finding and uh, we can get on our merry way here? Well, I guess I can only assume that some people find that clever. That's the only thing. I don't know, man. 
I've seen a lot of negative reviews for this book, so I don't know how many. I don't know how many people are actually finding it clever, unless uh, you're paying paying me to review the book and give it a positive rating. In which case, I loved it. <laughs> oh, Thumbs man. up. I feel I think, like I'm I'm quoted I, out. I think. I think we've had plenty. We could we could just pick a random page in the book. <laughs> right. Exactly. I could just like, okay. Bad quote. Uh, <laughs> as my avatar remit. Yeah. So then, after all of this, they tack on this happily ever after bullcrap. Yeah. We're all gonna go have AI sex in the stars forever, and uh, it's gonna be so great. I love you, Og. I mean, was I crazy to find the the Og and Kira reunion like really <laughs> weird? So she's an AI that they brought back to life with these lady shards because Halliday recorded her brain without her permission during the testing of the right. whatever, of the ONI headset. Mm -hmm. um, that's my impression of the <laughs> ONI headset. Um, so she's an AI, but Og never used things. And he's shot to bits out in the real world. But he's just shot to bits enough that the only way he can fight Anorak in the Oasis is to <laughs> yep. put on the headset just one time. And now 60% of the time we're towning as AIs every time. <laughs> yeah. But this right. book had zero loss. In the end, nobody lost anything. Um, if no. there was, I missed it. Supposedly, there was a whole bunch of tolls that were supposed to have been paid. Nobody, nobody paid any tolls. A lot of toll paying. Uh, nobody. A lot of toll paying. You know, nobody uh, dies. Nothing. Nothing. Well, wait. I think they did say a few random people that we aren't just random people in the world died from the uh, looters. The looters and you know the thing that was going wrong with the headsets. One of his good friends that were helping him with the quest, Shoto and uh, the other girl. So they got to the point where their avatars died and they were stuck in limbo with the headset right. on. Whatever. It's like, okay, if, if they are in a permanent coma or dead or something, that's something. At least kill somebody. I guess. I guess we really want people to die. I don't know. Um, it's not that. It's just that it's a part <laughs> of like a story that makes you think that something mattered. If if things could be explained to me a little more clearly, <laughs> he's he's gonna dumb this down. For me. <laughs> I'm I can't not following. I don't know. They're on an oasis, which I believe is a little island with one palm tree out <laughs> in the ocean. Yeah. Or in a desert. I don't know. <laughs> What's how is Prince there? He's dead. <laughs> this is so confusing. Wait a second, you're like, I don't even know what an oasis is. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the book for me. I guess that's what I'm saying. It's just oh geez. <laughs> Maybe they have oasis in Jakarta, but they I, don't have them here. You know, you're like, I've never been to an oasis. <laughs> uh, oh, you mean like the, the rest stop thing on the way to Chicago? The, on the overpass that is the best example of one yes. that's the oasis yeah. it's got like Seems a like panda big for everything that's and a yeah. uh, mcdonald's yeah. and a starbucks um some bathrooms and what you probably didn't notice was the uh prince planet off in the back <laughs> you know i never did i and i regret that now um because it's not it's the kind there. of place that invites exploration when you're in the oasis you're kind of no. like you, you know, want to get your mcmuffin go to the bathroom and get out of there yeah there is always like this big section the oasis isn't that big it's just a little thing over the highway right it's like just this little thing but there's always what feels like a huge incomplete section in there of like it's undone area with room for more business it's like it's like a half empty mall with shuttered businesses like we got mcdonald's and wendy's and a starbucks <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of empty space <laughs> how about this nobody dies but instead now there's more than one parzival 
and uh, <laughs> this other girl. There, there's, we all live forever. There's, I've made copies of me. He's off towning into the stars with his AI girlfriend and all these people, and everything's just woo. So, if you like happy endings, <laughs> <laughs> and I know you do. This is the book for you. Right, right. Yeah, that's happy ending. That's true. Yeah, we're just not enough into happy endings, apparently. We should be more. Um, I, I love terrible endings. The worst, <laughs> I request the worst ending um, I can possibly get. Right. Does I, that yeah. mean I'm one of Prince's nuts? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Mm. I we need to figure this out, I think, though. Yeah. But yeah. But if we're both um, one of Prince's nuts. No, we're both of them. <laughs> Watch out or we will launch a funk attack, the likes of which you've never seen. Oh. Uh, that might be a good place to wrap this thing. So then, yay or nay? Uh <laughs> Two thumbs up, like one, who loved that book? This guy. <laughs> Like if there was a rating system, like let's just say of like five stars um, or or five um, five doves of of the five doves you could give. Can I do just like a beak of one dove? <laughs> you can have. You can, okay, I Is think. That a, okay, yeah. one dove beak. Just the just the shriek attack part of <laughs> one dove is my rating. <laughs> When if you shriek. enjoy shriek attacks into your eyes, read this book. Right. Yeah. yeah. If they, they could just rename the book Shriek Attack, I think that's good. That's basically our overall rating review. Or if you have a lot of fond feelings and memories for John Hughes movies, 80s music, um, and you would like that really tamped down. <laughs> those good feelings to the point where you wonder if you ever liked any of that at all i guess it was it, it suffered from one of the problems with sequels uh part of the problems i've had with some of the new uh star wars reboots where oh i we know how you loved this prior version of this I'll tell you what we're gonna do we've got a new luke skywalker it's a girl <laughs> and death star wait way bigger way bigger <laughs> but it has a flaw the rebels have of of the plans for the flaw but it's it's also completely different you're gonna love it it's gonna blow your mind and it's like this this book is like okay i need an excuse for a new set of stupid quests and the excuse is stupid and everything that happens in it is stupid <laughs> oh, <geez>. and <laughs> The two kids from Weird Science just walked by. <laughs> Can you believe that? Oh. I just, I don't remember hating a book this much, uh, actively hating it while I was reading it. We'll see you next time on this. <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Tune oh, in. Brit. <laughs> That's rap. Tune in for our future reviews. I almost assure you that our next review will be better than this one. Um, Ooh, don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> wow. Just out and out lying. All right. I mean, <laughs> I guarantee, or your money back, this next one is, you're going to love it. Right, right, right. right. I, I, I mean, I'm, oh, for certain... Yeah. It couldn't be a book as bad as this one. Like, there's no way. You know, in this day and age, I hesitate to make any guarantees. So I, while I'm inclined to agree with you. Oh, Klein, nice, nice. <laughs> Man, again, how could the next one be better? But we guarantee it, so come on back. We're, well, I'm inclined to end this. You right? know, this Death Star, is uh, it doesn't just kill planets, it kills stars. So, <laughs> totally different. <laughs> You're reminding us how low the stakes are right here in the fight? <laughs> Why?
Why do you want to do that? You're pointing out that none of this shit matters. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh. Make us think it matters more. <laughs> <laughs> Stop saying teleport! <laughs> Wait. But other than that, it was good. It's, you know, the book was good. I enjoyed it. Yes, it's that bad. And no, you shouldn't read it. But then if they don't read it, why would they want to listen to the spoiler stuff? Uh, <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. If no one saw whatever movie Kylo Ren <laughs> lightsabered him in, he's I, dead. It's Baby Yoda. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Di- um, yeah. Tiny baby. What? <laughs> <laughs> we uh, will not ready be- player me that's what this book should be called we will not be getting any payments ever uh no. we might get sued by ernest <laughs> klein and whoever published this turd but uh other than that yeah uh, wait we can't get sued right you're I mean, in a hey, non-extradition country god dang it so if we get sued it means we'll become famous and so that's a win we're just like, I'm like- prince is nuts You're still here? It's over. Go home. <laughs>